Hey guys, this is PJ with the High Mountain Homestead and today yeah. I'm going to be talking about doing sheep in your backyard. Is it possible? Yes, it is. They're right there. So is it possible? Yes, I think it is. Here's how I would do it and do do it um, over here at the High Mountain Homestead. Let's talk about how to do sheep in the backyard. If you are like me, raising sheep on a small scale is appealing. It is probably the best way to get to grow your own red meat on a small scale. As you know, cows take up a lot of room, a lot of space, need a lot of grass, and they poop a lot more than sheep. But is it possible to do sheep in your backyard? I think so, yes. However, there are a lot of considerations I think you should be making when doing that. That's what I'm gonna be going over in this video. Okay, people are going to tell you it's not possible, and let me just get into that right now. Um, tell them to step off, because it totally is possible. There are people out there that are sheep snobs. I have an acre and a quarter, but on my backyard, I've got two sheep there, and I treat it just like a backyard. People think I can't run the sheep that I do on my acre and a quarter, but hey, I run seven sheep, five ewes successfully on an acre and a quarter. You can do a few sheep in your backyard, it's possible. So yeah, you'll have to do things a little bit differently, you have to get creative, but you know that going into that. I mean, you're doing sheep in your backyard. I think you know that you're already doing things a little bit differently. That's why you're here, that's why you're on the channel. Let's start talking about how you can make it work for you. Oh, and uh, before I get too far into this video, let me just prove that um, I am indeed in my backyard. There's our house right there okay totally and there's my sheep right here this is totally 100% in a backyard yes we do have some more legitimate pasture which is right here this area where my hand is um, I'm not talking about that today I'm just talking about the backyard this is permanently where these two guys live so let's start talking about how I make it work. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the considerations to make and then I would give specific plans of how I would do it. So the first consideration you gotta make is you're going to need more than one sheep. Sheep are incredibly social animals, so you need at least two. Um, these two are brothers and they, they're buds back here. One of them's name is Sean and one of them's name is Tiny Tim. We call him Tiny Tim because he got the snot beat out of him by one of our ewes once and he walked with a limp for a while. And Sean, just because Sean the Sheep is a cool name. But anyway, they're brothers, so I would recommend starting with two, maybe three if you can support it. Okay, another thing, check your zoning. Um, my home is zoned as residential agriculture, so uh, I think specifically in our city ordinances, for every 10,000 square feet, I can have one large animal, which is like a horse. So if I'm an acre and a quarter, that's about 50,000 square feet, if I do my math somewhat right. Um, so I can have five large animals. Sheep technically are not large animals, but the city ordinances were too complicated. So I just tell myself five adult sheep is what I can have. But make sure you check your city ordinances. Another thing to consider, sheep can be super loud. I am a big fan of Dorper sheep, um, which are what these guys are right here. Super incredible sheep. <coughs> They are so loud though. They're the loudest sheep I've ever raised. They're the only sheep I've ever raised. But many people that have that keep Dorper that have also raised other sheep, <coughs> see, say just as much that they're loud. So be aware of that. I would not go with Dorper for backyard sheep. <coughs> okay, realize that not all grass is the same. If you have lawn grass, it might not be very nutritious and it might not grow very tall. So realize that just because your lawn looks pretty, that you know that doesn't necessarily mean your sheep are going to love it and that might not be the case my sheep uh, love being on the grass but they eat through it super quickly so maybe maybe they love it but uh, it just doesn't grow back as quickly as a full pasture I guess what I'm trying to say is long grass may not pack the same nutritional value for your sheep so the next consideration that I would say is just be prepared to buy hay um, you're gonna have to buy hay you can't rely on just your lawn feeding them Sheep are notoriously picky. They will uh, eat your lawn down into patches. They'll let some grow up even to seed and they'll keep some down to bare, bare roots. Also lawn grass, just the way most people water their lawn, they don't have as strong a root system and sheep will rip out the roots. Whereas my pasture, I never have to worry about that. So you will have to feed them hay. 
On the note of feeding them hay, make sure you get mixed hay. I would get mixed alfalfa with some kind of grass. Uh, fencing. Be sure you have good fencing in place. Um, this fencing is actually quite low, but my front yard is fenced in, so um, even if they could or did want to hop this fence, they would be trapped in the front yard. So make sure you have good tall fencing, at least four feet tall. Um, maybe bigger if you are getting sheep that are after a year old. But my... <laughs> I mentioned they're loud. My next recommendation is don't breed sheep. Um, you just don't have the property size to do it. It's going to be really complicated, especially if you have have to keep a ram year round. That's going to be the worst. I have an acre and a quarter, and I thought I could keep a ram, and I ended up trading my ram away for rights into a stud program. So you probably do not need a ram. Um, just buy two to three sheep shortly after they're weaned, and raise them. Uh, from weaned sheep into into freezer sheep. Look at how big your lot is. Um, I would say if you don't have at least a quarter of an acre, don't even think about it. Um, I would say anything between a quarter and a half acre is where you could start at least entertaining the idea. Realize that you'll have to shovel poop, especially if you have um, adult sheep. However, if you do take my advice and just go with weaned sheep to freezer sheep, um, which by the way, like we process our lambs at six to seven months. Dorpers grow much faster, so maybe if you have a katahdin or something like that, it, it might take a long, a little, a few months longer. But if you have young sheep, their poop is actually more like bunny poop, so it's awesome. It just falls into the grass. You'll never notice it. It's not a problem. But big adult-sized sheep poops are, they look closer to like cow pies. So if you have adult sheep, you have to deal with that. Real quick, remember how I mentioned that uh, sheep are social animals? Um, this rooster right here, we have tried to pen him up with other roosters. We've clipped his wings. We've set up precautions for him not to jump the fence. I've never seen him jump him, but I know he does because he always ends up back here with these sheep. So he's kind of like their third musketeer when he hangs out with them. He's good, though. He's a barred rock. He's got that black and white look going, just like my dorper, so he fits in. Okay, that wraps up my considerations. Let me jump into exactly how I would do it. Number one, I would get two to three katahdins. I do not know if they are loud sheep, um, but I would have to imagine they're quieter than dorpers. Katahdins are hair sheep, very low input animals, tremendous meat producing animals, not quite as meaty as dorper, but still excellent sheep. Again, I wouldn't breed them. I would just raise them from weaning age, which could be as short as, you know, uh, two months uh, or three months. I weaned these guys at four months. I waited way too long because weaning is hard. Um, but I would buy something that's like 60 days old and just plan on keeping it for another six months at the longest. So I mentioned earlier you'll want to get some electric fence. However, I would make sure you have at least one permanent area for sheep uh, where you could you know, feed them hay and, and stuff like that. I would make sure that area is at least one to 200 square feet. Now if you're like, dude, I don't have like a full farm. Um, if you think about it, like 100 square feet is just 10 feet by 10 feet. It's not that big. Um, and that's starting. Obviously, three to 400 square feet for just two sheep would be much better. But um, a dry lot situation where you're feeding them hay, 100, 200 square feet is going to be great for them. Sorry, that's 100 and 200 square feet per sheep. I'll make that clear. And that's more generous than industry standards. Um, some people might comment on this and say, hey, that's too much or too little. Um, I don't think it's too little, but a lot of commercial growers would say it's too much. But hey, you want your own sheep on your backyard, so who freaking cares what the commercial growers say, right? Okay, and once you have that permanent setup, I would say just use electric fence to kind of rotate them throughout your yard to give them just variety of spots and to give your grass different chances to get eaten up and pooped on by the sheep. You will have the best lawn next year. Oh my gosh, the poop and the nitrogen in that poop will blow up your lawn. I've noticed that when I've moved my sheep onto my front lawn. It's amazing. Okay, that's what I've got today. I hope that was helpful. If you liked the video, please like it on YouTube. It goes a long way. Basically, it helps my videos show up in your suggested feed. And if you want to see more of what it's like to do small-scale sheep keeping, consider subscribing to my channel. Hey, if you're doing backyard sheep, comment on this video. Tell me how it's going. If you've done it, if you want to do it, I want to hear about it. I have been in all stages of backyard sheep from wanting to do it for years to being a first timer. I guess I haven't done all stages. I am not an experienced one, but I have been doing it for a year now. So 
Um, let me know how it's going. Let's engage in the comment section. Thanks again for watching this video. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead, and I hope to see you again on the channel.